And I want to thank everybody for inviting me here today. And actually, let, you know, let me say that a different way. As she, as she said, uh, I've got a two-week-old boy at home. So in the last 48 hours, I've been puked on, <laughs> peed on, woken up repeatedly out of an almost deep and restful sleep. And so I am really, really grateful to spend some time with you here today. <laughs> If I, if I lay down and take a nap during my speech, you'll know why. Before I begin, I want to recognize uh, some of my colleagues who are here with us today. And if, forgive me if you've already done that. We're going to do it again for a minute. I came down here with uh, my good friend, Representative Bobby Payne. Bobby, if you'd stand up. We've got uh, near me, Melody Bell, Representative Bell. Uh, Thad Altman, where's Thad? Thad. <laughs> Sam Killebrew. Sam's here somewhere. He's out getting a cup of coffee. <laughs> Fiona McFarlane. <laughs> and Representative Keith True now. And uh, you're going to hear from me today, but the people that are going to make the Florida Wildlife Corridor happen from a state government perspective are the people I just named and others who aren't in the room today. They're the ones that are going to get it done. So, uh, and they have a passion for this project, I can tell you. So as I was driving down here today, I began on I-95 and then came down I-4. And I thought about what that trip would have been like, maybe on horseback, when the state was first formed in 1845. Given the traffic we hit, it might have been quicker. Um, but you know, long before Florida was the third largest state in the country, it was mostly wild. It was thinly populated with people, but teeming with millions of plants and animals of all varieties. And the good news is that a wonderful wild remnant of Florida remains. The bad news is that if we don't act, it will dwindle away unless each person in this room commits to save it. In the recent legislative session at the prompting of members of your organization, the leadership, uh, one session ago, we um, gave this a name that citizens can remember and rally around, the Florida Wildlife Corridor. It's a corridor that runs from the Everglades to the Florida Georgia line, and it connects and shows us that there is still a wild remnant of a land remembered that we can save. In the legislature, I can assure you that we're going to focus on a more long-term perspective that means that we work on projects that have a long-term benefit. And one of those things is preserving the beauty of Florida's natural resources so that we can pass it down to the next generation better than we found it. And I know everybody in this room is committed to that goal. And now I want to tell you a couple stories. The first story is about why I'm here. And that began with Carlton Ward and Arnie Bellini coming up to make a presentation. And um, what I loved about those two guys is they came with a lot of passion. And Carlton had the credibility of someone who grew up in a ranching family and knows that people and wildlife can exist together and benefit together through land conservation efforts. And Arnie Bellini is an entrepreneur and he had that entrepreneur's attitude of whatever it takes to make a vision a reality. Is uh, Arnie here today? Where's Arnie? I see Carlton, yeah. And as you can imagine, we get lobbied on all kinds of things in the legislature. This program, this idea, help me with this budget request, help pass a bill that one group or the other cares about, or help kill a bill that one group or the other doesn't want to see happen. But this was different for me as a kid who grew up reading Ranger Rick and loved wildlife and the outdoors, um, you know, I saw maps and I saw a video that they presented that proved that there were still some wild Florida left. And they put out the challenge that we had a chance to preserve it. And I can tell you, frankly, it was love at first sight. Now, the moral of this story is that you can come to Tallahassee, make a presentation, and make a difference. And so that same session we did, as I mentioned, pass the Florida Wildlife Corridor legislation that Keith Trunow was the author of in the House and with his Senate partner. The second story I want to tell you came about as part of a designation ceremony. And quick background, we have a designation, the majority uh, that's in power, you know, designate somebody to be the next speaker. And I had to prepare this designation ceremony. 
there's a lot of pomp and circumstances and I give a speech, a lot of people give speeches and one of the traditions is to give a gift to every member of, in this case, the Republican conference. And I decided to uh, give everybody a gift of a photograph by Carlton Ward. But not just any photograph, we wanted to make it special. So we asked Carlton to capture a special place in or near every member's legislative district that was part of the Florida Wildlife Corridor. And, and he did that. And I think it made an impression after we gave out, it made an impression on me and other members of our conference to know that in fact, we have this corridor that stretches across the state and we still have an opportunity to preserve it. Now, if you go to the Capitol this fall and you go into their offices, you will see those photographs hanging in the, on the walls of dozens and dozens of our members. And, and what it did and what it taught me is these photographs, the photographs have generated interest and momentum, political momentum to accomplish the Florida Wildlife Corridor. So long after my speech is gone, Carlton's photographs remain. Seeing the wildlife corridor is falling in love with it. If I accomplish nothing else in my remarks today, I wanna to assure you of this, that I am personally committed to making sure that we get a early start, a successful start on the Florida Wildlife Corridor. And I also wanna tell you that the members that are here today and many that couldn't be here today are equally passionate to see that happen. You know, my term will end in a couple of years and uh, this project uh, for better or worse is gonna take longer than that. But the people in this room and those that come behind, I know are committed to see it through with you till the very end. And I can promise you that in the next two and a half years, if I have anything to do about it, we're gonna make sure we make real progress toward that goal. You know, preserving the corridor has many purposes. Obviously, as the name suggests, it's about protecting wildlife, whether it's the Florida panther or other large species that need room to run, they need room to breed and have genetic diversity. And that's an important goal. But it also protects um, a very important part of, of Floridians that love this land and make their living on it, which is our farmers and ranchers. There's a saying that if you got a chance to eat today, you know, thank a farmer or rancher. And these are people who understand that, that wildlife and, and humans and, and, and this, this type of uh, enterprise can live in heart relative harmony and benefit by conserving the land for each other. But I think that uh, COVID and, and the, uh, even the war in Ukraine has taught us that food security is an important factor. Uh, we, we saw how a lot of that can be put at risk. And we are so blessed in the state of Florida to have a vibrant agricultural community that feeds not only the state of Florida, but a large part of the nation in providing fresh fruits and vegetables, providing beef cattle. And I don't think that can be lost in our conversation about preserving that for the future. And finally, it's about protecting the environment. And I, I hope that it's not as we acquire land and conservation easements that we do better than preserving the environmental status quo. We should make sure that as we secure these things that we get more out of the land, more, uh, as they say, uh, environmental services or whatever the, the technical term is for it, to make sure that we are improving our opportunity to have a lasting water supply, that we're giving the aquifer a chance to recharge. And as well, I believe that the wildlife corridor can play a very important role in our water quality. Uh, we've all heard the stories, we're all concerned about it, and as millions of new people come into the state of Florida, we'd better be ready, and we'd better have the, the land that can do so much on its own to help protect our critical uh, resources. And so protecting wildlife, preserving farms and ranches, and enhancing our environment is a triple benefit to the Florida Wildlife Corridor that, is, that few projects that the state works on can claim. It's a project I really look forward to working on personally with my colleagues that I mentioned and, and making this collective goal a reality. I wanna just thank you so much for your invitation to me today. And again, I wanna thank you for allowing me to spend the whole day <laughs> with you today. <laughs> I hope my wife's not listening. The, ba the baby cried just as, uh, as I left. And I said, sorry, honey, I've got to leave. But it's really great to be with you. I, I, you know, I want to just say again, uh, thank you to you, Carlton. Uh, you know, again, there's a few meetings that you walk away 
from and, and kind of fall in love with an idea. And uh, the way you presented that uh, with facts, with, with pictures, uh, and, and presented it in a way that, that uh, cuts across party lines, that just makes you really want to be a part of something special. That's why each and every one of you are here. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your day, uh, committing to this. But uh, what I saw in the, the you know, the, the uh, in Mallory, um, appreciate all your leadership in the meetings we've had together to talk about this, is uh, this is a group effort and uh, we're going to get it done. I've just been so impressed from the, your itinerary to walking in here and seeing the photographs, Carlton's photographs, you know, the wall wrap. I mean, you guys got it. I mean, the Marriott, like, what do you guys want? Like, so you, you guys just did an amazing job. But what it speaks to me is, is this is what success looks like. So, so know that, commit to that, let's not let up, um, and, and don't get discouraged because it is a multiple year, maybe a decadal effort, uh, but we have to act, we have to act now, and the people I introduced at the beginning of this are gonna make it happen. You have the best of the best here, and the leadership that is gonna make this a reality. So thank you so much for having me today. God bless you.